Now joining us for EMET is Melanie Townsend. Mel, tell us where we can go for a good meal this week. Well, Anthony, I have the perfect place in mind if you're in the mood for some fine wine and good cuisine. Find out where this week's hotspot was right after we take a look at what's the buzz in the world of entertainment in EMET Top 5. First up on Top 5, an update on the controversy surrounding Bruce Jenner. Pictures circulating around TMZ and other news sources about Jenner's changed appearance is confirmed. Friends and family says that Jenner has always felt like a female since the age of five. Plans to go forward with his male to female transition have been halted due to his involvement in a nasty car accident. Ooh. Oh, but the controversy doesn't end there with the Kardashian clan. At number four, Will Smith releases a statement saying he does not want his two children, Jaden and Willow Smith, hanging out with Kendall and Kylie Jenner whatsoever. Smith and Jada see the girls as bad influences due to their dramatic and wild lifestyle. In other words, ain't nobody got time for that. Back to our neck of the woods at number three, an event coming to City Hall this weekend is bound to excite all five senses. Artobia 2015 is back in the mile high with more local artists, fashion fanatics, live music, food, and cocktails to enjoy. The event begins tomorrow and tickets are on sale now. Our trending vid of the week comes in at number two. Now remember this cool girl from the Missy Elliott music videos? Well, she's back and she can still work it. Allison Stoner makes a remarkable comeback in her tribute video to Missy and breaks out those legendary dance moves. And finally at number one, with over 23.0 million viewers watching at home, NBC makes a record-breaking rating with the, rate, with the Saturday Night Live 40th anniversary special. Three and a half hours full of new and classic skits and jokes aired last Sunday with many beloved favorites in attendance, such as Will Ferrell, Jimmy Fallon, Eddie Murphy, Steve Martin, Tina Fey, Mike Myers, and more, which makes this one night to remember. Now, who can forget that steamy kiss between Betty White and Bradley Cooper? SNL certainly doesn't hold back on shock value, and I hope it stays that way. Now, moving on from Hollywood to things closer to home, it's all about good food in Denver today. And this week's spot is a restaurant that certainly has one big order to fill to the start of Denver Restaurant Week. Day or night, come snow or shine. The good people of Denver love to dine. And there's plenty of culinary delights ready for eager customers during Denver's Restaurant Week. 10 days are dedicated for Mile High Restaurant Pioneers. Over 180 restaurants are catering to this special event. On the corner of 17th and Wazi, there's a place where the finest of seafood and cocktails make their way to your table. Adjacent to the historical Oxford Hotel and in association with the iconic Cruise Room Bar, McCormick's offers a one-of-a-kind fine dining experience. The wine is plenty, the ambiance is refined, and the staff is one-of-a-kind. Chef Jeff gives us an insight on what to expect for Denver Restaurant Week. Restaurant Week is basically uh, a, a number of restaurants just kind of giving their flair and their originality and creativity. It's one of the older, oldest restaurants here in downtown Denver and is um, connected with the Oxford Hotel. We mixed it up a little bit more of uh, steaks and also seafood, lobster, um, crab legs, uh, fresh uh, fish flown in from all over basically the world, Hawaii, some of Chile coming into um, spring. So it has some spring items on there as well, lighter, on the lighter side. We're gonna go an extra week this year too. So that's something to keep in mind. Denver Restaurant Week definitely has a lot to offer, especially here at McCormick's. So come on down, you might like what you taste. Guys, that dish I had was perfection. Lovers of salmon or seafood in general for that matter, make sure you check that place off your list if you choose to partake in DRW. And because it's the start of a new season, things are truly looking a la mode. We get the scoop on some fabulous fashion bloggers on campus, just in time for the period of fashionable spring wear. In honor of New York Fashion Week, we took to the streets of Denver to bring you some of Denver's authentic fashion. Because of fashion bloggers such as Amanda Kister, Denver fashion has taken the internet by storm. I'm the founder and chief stylist of Ninth and Auraria, which was formerly known as Fashion East and the Mile High. Um, it's a, a fashion and style blog and it's really, the shift now is becoming a, a social movement. 
Ninth and Auraria started as a one-woman army and slowly, from the ground up, built an online fashion empire. I think it was kind of like a long-term process that really brought on the blog. I got into the fashion industry when I was a teenager, and now I'm in my late 20s. And uh, it really was kind of a manifestation of all the different experiences that I had had with the fashion industry. So whether you're a first class fashionista or a simple thrift store shopper, Ninth and Auraria has it all. Just check out the blog and um, I really hope that more people are able to learn about what we're doing and want to get involved, whether it be through profiling them or someone they know. Um, and just continuing this amazing, amazing feat. It's incredible. Oh. With the Met Report, I is Yada. Hmm, maybe I can see if these ladies can give me some cool fashion tips. Y'all know how I like to keep it in style. Well guys, it appears that this weekend is filled with pretty exciting things to do and see. That is if you're willing to brave the snow, including two new movies that I think are definitely must-sees. Oh my gosh, did you see that? You gotta check it out. I wanna see that. That's so cool, I can't wait. We have to go and check that out. Let's see. But Disney's has something else of a masterpiece in the works. From the director of the critically acclaimed film North Country, McFarland USA tells the true story of a 1987 cross country team located in a struggling Latino community. Coach Jim White, played by Kevin Costner, is determined to make his new team legendary. It creates a closer bond with unlikely friends in the process. Time is running out to get your tickets, so on your marks, get set and get ready to see this movie in a theater near you. Ooh, showtime. For generations, you could only be a jock, a geek, a princess, or a basket case. I'm my own best friend. But what I didn't know was I had a brand new label. There's my favorite Duff. Sorry, what? Duff. D-U-F-F. -F, designated ugly fat friend. What did you just say to me? Friends come in all shapes and sizes. Unfortunately, that comes with certain unpopular titles, such as a Duff. Bianca, a practical and cynical high school senior, dares to change the balance of the adolescent cosmos by being relieved of her label as the designated ugly fat friend that her more attractive friends have been so kind to bestow upon her. Will she succeed or remain a duff forever? Oh no, you did. I'm not insane. Yes, you did. Well, guys, the duff definitely looks funny. But speaking of funny, what did you guys think of SNL 40? Did you think it was funny? Did you laugh at all? I laughed maybe once during the whole thing. Well, as much as I like Adam Sandler's Opera Man, I give it two thumbs down. I don't think it was that funny. Was like, I think it was funny to them as like the 50,000 people that were there for SNL, but I think for the fans it wasn't I think good. My, yeah, my favorite part was just bringing back the old classics. Absolutely. And you like you like the music numbers. Yeah, I thought the music numbers were really good. I thought it was just too long and stuff. Three and a yeah. half hours? Yeah, I, did, I, was, I watched on Hulu On Demand one hour on Saturday and then another hour and a half on Sunday. It was too much. Well, coming up next is sports.